hi guys welcome to my youtube video for getting ready with me and makeup i haven't done one of these in a very long time where i have sat down and talked to a camera it pretty much walks you through my entire makeup routine i will be doing this as a voiceover so it'll just be me doing the actions telling you what the products are is showing you how I apply, apply them because it's a lot easier for me to do this way and I'm obviously not home by myself so other people are talking and I don't want that to overshadow the video so it's just gonna be me talking over it and showing you guys the, video, the products that I use I am getting ready for an event today it is for one of my cousins birthday she's turning 50 so this is my makeup routine on how I do it I've already done my hair it's just drying it's air drying but I will show you how I like blow my hair out fully pick it out and all that stuff and then i will show you what my outfit is like um after the fact so you guys can see what that is like if you see me looking anywhere i'm looking at my monitor because i'm using my computer as my monitor so this is my way of being able to make sure that i'm in frame i'm in focus all those great things so voiceover nira take it away Hey guys, it's voiceover Nira. So I'm gonna start out with my primer. I use two primers, which is the Milani Make It Easy Last Spray and then the e.l.f. Grip Hydro Primer. So I usually put the primer, actually the actual primer first, because it has that sticky like feel to it. So that like, it'll grip the makeup. And I put the spray on there so that like, it kind of almost like sets the primer in a way I know that makes absolutely no sense but that's the best way I can explain it rubbing it in is your best bet I know there's lots of people who like pat it in patting it in is not going to do anything because all you're doing is just moving it around your face and it's just going to make it sticky but if you rub it in you know that it's on your skin and it's going to be there to stay compared to like patting it and then spray it you want to get like a really good mist on your face and then you don't want to rub it in you want to wave it dry like make sure it just dries down and when it dries down your face will feel sticky but it'll also feel refreshed and you'll kind of have that glowy look instead of like a mattified look which is what you want especially when you're wearing makeup all day then i go with brows first i'm a brows first girly we use the elf clear brow gel and you see here i'm like spreading the product all the way through my eyebrows and then i brush it back forward and then i move the eyebrows the way i want them to be because this is what's going to get your eyebrows to stay in place and it'll also keep the product on your eyebrows a lot longer ever since i started doing this with my eyebrows i have noticed a difference in the way that they last and also just the way that they present themselves and i use a spoolie and like a almost like a scapular into it so i can lay it down and use the spoolie to like evenly distribute the product through it you can get the brush from elf it's like three bucks maybe five and just use it just for that and you will notice a difference and you can see the difference in my eyebrows and i don't have thick eyebrows they are very very sparse so now i am going to move into like the tinting process pretty much i don't have very thick and full eyebrows as you can tell so i take the maybelline like eyebrow tint and i just brush it all the way through and i know this is going to seem so redundant to do this now but if you try to do the gel on top of the tint it's just going to mix together and it's not good because you give the gel time to dry down before you put the tint on here i'm using like shade like warm brown because i don't like my black my brows to be extremely black because i don't have true black hair i have like a dark brown blackish hair so this is just kind of like goes on top of it and it just makes it blend a lot easier and it makes it easier for me to do my eyebrows later now I'm going into like the carving. I still carve my eyebrows. I don't care what anybody else says in the makeup community. I will always do this. I will never change it because this is what makes my eyebrows pop. So they don't look one dimensional on my face. And I use the same color I use to conceal with, which is hazelnut from Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. And I take a flat brush from Morphe and I just carve out the imperfections under my eyebrows because this is how you're gonna make them look clean since I am having to pretty much make my eyebrows look present on my face. And I also carve it on the outside too. Like I used to do my foundation, like take my foundation and put it on top. But as I like, I guess evolved with my makeup, I fell in love with the way that it just looked but making it stand out and it just makes them pop. It also makes it easier for you to connect it. And then when you go blend it out, you don't have to worry about having it being in like inconsistent because when you try to blend your foundation on top and then try to go and blend your foundation on the bottom like your concealer the colors will mesh and then it's not the same color 
as your foundation compared to doing this now as almost like an underpaint and then when you go to put your foundation on top it just blends so much better and you see like i'm connecting it so that way when i i can see like okay this is going to be a good a good brow day or it's going to be a bad brow day if that makes sense because sometimes you can do your brows perfectly and there's no problem everything works out like it's supposed to and then sometimes you can do your eyebrows and you have to go and do major construction to them after you've done the underpaint just for the simple fact that like nothing worked out the way you wanted it to now i'm taking this is like an old concealer dense brush they don't make anymore so i've had it for years i just clean it out because it's just such a good brush and I have not been able to find any brush that is similar to this and when I do I will let you guys know because this brush is my holy grail and I use it for damn near everything to blend out most of the stuff on my face as you can tell here I am blending it out blending my concealer is gonna be a nice little halo effect I look like an off-brand black superhero maybe like Wonder Woman or some something like that is what I look like right now but it's all worth it in the end because nobody sees this part when I finish my makeup this is damn near your underpaint you want to blend this out like no other you want it to look nice and blended because it matters because if you don't it, you will see it under your foundation especially especially if it is not a full coverage foundation then i'm taking the same concealer that i use to carve out my eyebrows put on my eyelids my eyelids are a very different shade than the rest of my face because whatever reason hyperpigmentation so i do this that way everything looks cohesive this is not a required step if your eye if that doesn't bother you it bothers me and i have done makeup before where i didn't do it and i noticed a complete difference doing the same thing you want to blend this out evenly and then you're going to just make sure it sits there it shouldn't crease if you do have a problem with creasing then maybe it may be the technique or the fact that you have hooded eyes i don't have hooded eyes so i don't have that problem but i know there are people who do have that problem i'm gonna jump ahead of the clip I'm going to be taking the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder in the shade Medium Deep. And I'm going to be taking that with the same brush and I'm setting my eyes so that they don't crease. Even though I never really have that problem, I do set it so that it'll stay. And if I do decide to wear a foundation or anything like that, the foundation will indeed pop out and it won't be just flat and one dimensional, which I can do a whole nother video on that explaining that. So now I'm going to be taking that same powder but with a puff powder, like sponge, brush, whatever you want to call it, powder puff, there it is, there's the word. And I'm putting this all over my face. And I know you're gonna be like, Jen, what was the purpose of the primer? That's what the primer is supposed to do. It's supposed to be, able to it sets the primer even more, but it also just sets your face and helps kind of like the shine. I have oily skin, so this is your holy grail. This is something you should be doing because this is what's gonna make your makeup last because you have that extra powder and it's like security, but it's not, heavy so you won't feel it you know there's powder on your face but it's not heavy and you just want to evenly put this around your face you're gonna look like a ghost you're gonna look like your casket ready but i promise you're not casket ready because you're gonna look beautiful at the end you just have to trust the process i know it sounds crazy but you gotta trust it okay you gotta trust the process so this next step i'm taking my concealer and i'm just outlining the under part of my eye i know this is weird and i know you guys are gonna be like oh my god where's your foundation you're not doing it i don't do foundation first ever since i started doing this technique my makeup has looked so much better and i don't look as cakey and i don't feel as cakey i am in a way underpainting but blending everything together at the end you want to pretty much get as close as you can to the bottom part of your eye and just build that coverage i'm using the same found the same foundation the same concealer from maybelline maybelline sponsor me fit me this is the shade hazelnut it's a little golden but it's still bright but it's like not so bright that i'm trying to look like a light bright okay bars anyways you want to make this kind of look in a way like a triangle like you're almost doing like some tribal look but you're not doing tribal look that's like that's what you want it to look like because you want this to be as full coverage as you can because i have dark circles so if you have dark circles this is your best bet but if you want it to look even better um color correcting is going to be your best friend so if you're a like dark skin person like me red is going to be red and like orange cancel out that darkness so you won't have that shine through i haven't had that problem because i do a lot of skincare on the side so that makes it easier 
if you want to you can connect the part that's where your nose is and then throw, do a little bit on your chin and on your forehead and then you're just gonna let this sit on your face let it sit kind of dry down you want, don't want it to dry down all the way but just a little bit and you can take a fan or use your hands and just dry down just a little bit and then this is your chance to go wet your beauty blender so you can get ready to blend it along with your foundation Nick stay matte foundation in the shade Cy cyana cyana I don't know if they make this shade anymore because I can't find it. The only place I can find it is on, found, on foundation. It's on Amazon. <laughs> so that's the only place. I put this directly on my face because I don't like putting it on my brush because it'll make your brush really cakey and then you have to keep cleaning your brush because it has build up. It's gonna have build up anyways, but this will help lessen that. I'm taking a Real Techniques foundation brush and I am blending this out around my concealer the top part and the bottom part where my concealer is at is kind of get blended in there because it's not that deep but I will just blend and you're using stifling motions not swiping motions and it might look like I'm doing swiping motions but I have this video sped up I'm not I'm stifling I'm like almost like kind of punching my face but not punching it but I'm avoiding blending my concealer with this brush because you're going to do that with your beauty blender foundation is important and you might have to go back in and build it up so that way there's no patchiness you will see me do that at time time to time in here and i know people are gonna be like oh my god janeira do i have to use a brush do i have to use a brush can i use a beauty blender you can use a beauty blender either one works do what works best for you i can use both I can use brushes or beauty blenders and I'm still gonna get the same results. It might look, look a little bit more airbrushed, but it's still gonna look good either way. It's all about technique, not so much the products that you're using. Now, as you can see here, I'm taking a beauty blender, still using press, pressing motions and like stabbing motions, not swiping, because you wanna keep all the product. Since this makeup is expensive and you also don't want it to get messed up and rubbed out you can see i was tired because i was blended my, ar my arms were getting a workout and i even go to the gym so that's real sad that shows you how hard i was blending to make sure this stuff looks cute and good it might brights we just needed it to be a little bit brighter and you don't want to put too much just a little because a little goes a long way and you just want to like lift it up just a little kind of lift up the, the back eye just some kind of make it slanted so you kind of give yourself like a artificial eye lift and you're gonna put, somewhat put it in the same place as you put it with the normal concealer but just not a lot unless that's what you're going for and if you want to be even a little bit more crazier you really could go a shade lighter i'm just not one of those girlies because then you just look really washed out especially when you start doing flash here you can tell i'm still putting a little bit of foundation because i'm waiting for that concealer to dry down just so that it's good when i go to blend it out that's what you want and you can also see your patches on your face you can see it a lot better than someone else can because it's your face then we're gonna do this contour stick it's from nyx it's in the shade like deep to dark and i'm just putting it in the places where i would want my shadows to be which is usually on my forehead and then i do right above where my cheekbone is not exactly in it and not in the cut because that's what's going to make it look more prominent and then i do under my chin and then I'll take like a little sideline right where like my I guess sideburns would be in the ear because those are my places where I like for my contour to sit. And then you're gonna go back in with your beauty blender and you're gonna blend like your life depends on it. If it messes up, it's fine because you're gonna set it anyways. And then you're gonna put blush on top of it later. So no one should be that close to you that they can see that something happens. Cause I have that problem. Here's a transparency moment where when I go to blend on the right side of my eye but it's going to be your left looking at it it will never blend out ever it never blends out the way I want it to I don't know if there's just product separation and you can see me looking at it now I just kind of move past it because at that point what can I do I've already put all this makeup on my face we just kind of have to live laugh love through it and just hope for the best it's just that's all you can do there's not much you can do if your makeup messes up you just figure out a way to like either hide it or make it better because Trying to redo all that stuff is so much work and it can be very frustrating. Just don't ever cry because if you start crying, then you have to start all over again. And that's not fun. Like nobody, nobody wants to do that. I was listening to music here. I don't even remember what I was listening to. It was probably Megan. It was my bad bitches only playlist. If you want that, I can link it down below on Apple Music. 
only for Apple Music girlies. So sorry to all the Spotify girls. This is not a Spotify house. But, you know, we're almost done blending this concealer out and then I'll be right back. Now I'm taking a press powder from Maybelline. It is a shade, I think, 332. And I'm taking this brush from Real Techniques, which is a setting powder brush. And I'm just going over the parts where I just concealed to kind of help with some creasing. I'm still learning how to not have as bad creases, but you live and you learn and you keep growing. One thing about makeup, you can always learn and grow and make it better. There's never a moment where you become an expert because there's always some ways you can improve your makeup and make it better. And this is one of those things that I'm doing, but this is a great way to start. This is something I implemented into my Make it routine and i realized that it did make a difference especially before i would put my translucent powder on there and it's so lightweight so you really can't see it and i got it in the same shade that i use to brighten my under eye when i do my translucent powder because i want my under eye in those places to look bright because if you don't do that then it's not gonna be that cute and now i'm taking the same little nyx contour stick and I'm contouring my nose. I do this last because I don't want it to interfere with my concealer and mess it up. And I want it to look nice and precise and I can be intentional about where I put it, especially with how my nose is shaped. Now I'm taking the Maybelline Fit Me Translucent Powder in shade 30 Medium Deep, which is around the same shade as the pressed powder. And I'm taking my powder puff really lightly, being careful how I put this on here and putting it under my eye. This goes under my eye and I'm pretty sure like where the nose bridge is and I think I put some on my chin and maybe my forehead. Why do I do this? And I'm gonna be like, Janaira, that's such a bright color. Why would you do that? Because I want it to be bright. I don't wanna look like I'm dead, okay? But there's a way you can do it without like looking so bright that it just, it don't look right. But I implemented this a long time ago. Not, like, not even that long ago, maybe like a month, maybe two. It was around my birthday is when I started doing it. And it just elevated my makeup so much better. And this translucent powder is really good. So if you're looking for something that is drug store friendly, this is your friend. This is your girl. She is your friend compared to what I pay for the Laura Mercier, which is like $45. It's expensive. Now the moment you guys have all been waiting for, which is blending out my contour. I know y'all been like, girl, when are you gonna blend this out? I'm taking the Black Radiance Contour Palette. This is very beginner friendly. It is also very drugstore friendly and it's good on your pockets. And it has been a tried and true through my makeup routine. I have been using this since I started doing makeup back when I was 16 years old and I will never switch up on it because it is dark enough for me. And I feel like they can honestly go even darker and make one for my dark girlies out there with their beautiful skins and make it darker truly because this is good for me but like someone who's maybe just a shade or two even a few shades darker than me it'd be perfect and i'm just blending it out this brush was given to me so if you want something that's similar to this go to tj maxx and get one of those types of brushes and you're gonna get that same density this one has because i don't know the name of the brand so i can't tell you and i know you're not gonna find this type of density with like a sephora brush or something like that you're gonna have to get it from like off brand and them off brand brushes they be hitting better than the ones that are name brand so go to tj maxx as you can see i just blended all that out i haven't done my nose yet because we do that later we don't do that right now because you do it now it's not gonna look good see now i'm taking the same little brush i told y'all about that's like that little dense concealer brush i wasn't lying when i said i used it for everything you're gonna blend it out and it's gonna look real nice you don't want it to look so harsh that people can tell that your nose is contoured I have a crooked nose, so the way I do it is different and it's gonna look different, but it's gonna work for my shaped nose, but it's gonna be different for everyone. I can't make a contour nose like thing because it's not gonna be the same because I don't have a normal nose. Now, this is something I've started adding and I'm still learning how to do it, but it is bronzer, something I've never really implemented. This is from Juvia's Place and is in the shade Deep Dark. They do have a shade that is lighter than this one and my mother uses that one and it worked good for her. For me, it didn't show up. I don't know, maybe it was just like a user error or what, but I didn't see it. But as you can tell, I'm taking the warmer shade and putting it on there because the other shade is very similar to my contour color and that is not what I wanted. I don't know if that was the intention and they want you to use that one as a contour. I haven't tried that, but I will. Now I'm taking the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder 
and I'm edging the bottom of where I contoured at. And I know y'all be like, oh my God, Janira, that contour looked real heavy. I know, but it, trust the process, trust it. But this is like a reverse contour and it's just gonna kind of add like a little bit of a highlight, but also make your jawline and that part like look even more like, what's the word? Like blended, flawless. I don't know what the word is, but yeah, just do that. And I take this shade because it is not that bright somewhat still kind of like in an orangey undertone but it's dark skin friendly because if you do the other one you it's not gonna be cute at least not on me it's not gonna be cute so I just use this one because it's the best method and I only put it there because that's what you want you want it to look snatched okay so this next step was improv I've never done this but it ended up working out in my favor I'm taking that bright ass translucent powder that I told you about and I'm etching out where I put my contour just to kind of give it a little bit more definition and this was great I felt like I was one of the TikTok girlies for once in my life. And it, oh, y'all see that contour? It was great. It was, it was eaten down and I loved every second of it. Every second. Uh, this was like a warm brown. I've never really used this pen, but it's all right. There's one that's a little bit thinner than this one and it works perfectly because it's so thin. But if you know what you're doing, you can manipulate it. And I do this last kind of towards the end of my makeup routine because you can easily mess up your brows when you're trying to do like foundation and all the other stuff. So I do it once I have done all of my liquids and most of my powder so that it won't get messed up. And as you can see here, I was taking like kind of working from the back to the front and then I like just go backward, back and forth between forward and back. There's also a spoolie brush on this and I alternate between the spoolie and my finger of blending out the like the front part so it can kind of have that fade i know my brows aren't going to look natural simply because i don't have thick eyebrow hairs and i could really care less about that and don't ever feel bad about having to fill in your eyebrows because there are girls who are blessed with thick ones i'm not one of them i've never been and i never will be so i know that they're not going to look natural that's not the point i want my brows to look good and that's how we're going to do it they're not supposed to be sisters. They're like cousins, they're distant cousins. So that's why one has like a really nice arch and the other one doesn't. It's just always been that way. And there's no way that I could fix that. It's just how my face is like just shaped. But as you can tell, I'm taking the spoolie and like just cleaning it up. And then I'm gonna go back in with the pencil and do it again. I do my brows very differently. I can use a pencil, but I can also use a pomade. The pomade that I use, I got the wrong shade and Ulta doesn't have it in stock. So I'm waiting for them to get it back in stock so I can buy it. But I like both. It's pretty much the same technique. Filling it in, feathering it out, filling it in, feathering it out. And if you don't want that and you want it to look more real, you can always take a eyeliner pen and you can do that and like make hair stroke like, like strokes and it'll do the same thing. Now we're gonna move into the next part, which is my eyeliner. This is the NYX one. I, this is my first time using it and it's a felt tip and I loved it. Um, I had more control over it compared to the e.l.f. one that I use, which is good, but it's not beginner friendly. This one is mo more beginner friendly. And I take my eyeliner and I edge out the, like, the way I want the top part of the liner to sit. And then I'll go back in in the front and somewhat kind of like halfway stop it at the, the middle of my eye. And then I'll take the tail end of what I made first and I will connect the two of them and then once I do that I fill it in that's the best way that you're gonna learn how to do eyeliner make your little tail if you want it to look more slanted you slant it up if you don't you just make it lower the angle just whatever you want take that inner part of your eye draw it halfway to the middle of your eyelid and then connect them and fill it in easiest step and if you have hooded eyes there are tons of videos you can watch it's going to be different you just won't you'll make your line a little bit longer and you won't make the line as long as your eyelid is thick because you won't be able to see it because your eyelash your eyelid will cover it up now moving to the the good moment me doing my lashes um my lash glue is from duo it is the black one but i also use the one that comes in the white tube that turns black they both work really really well either one just don't put hair glue on your lashes please for the love of god and i'm speaking directly to the black women that watch this video stop doing that because you're going to ruin your eyelid or you're going to go blonde and it's not for that use it for what it is used for hair not eyelashes now my eyelashes are they're like the kiss i envy 
you can only get these now off of walmart website you cannot get them off amazon i've tried but they're like six dollars and you get two pair so they're really good and i love them they last really long and they look really nice they're not super heavy but they can be after a while wearing them i can't show you really how to put lashes on you put the glue let it sit down dry it down and then once it gets tacky it's gonna stick the best way to learn is just keep doing it and keep doing it because if you Try to watch videos it's never gonna make sense because everybody's technique for doing it is going to be different you can see i was excited about putting my lashes on because this is what elevates my makeup look and i just look like a different person every single time i love it they look so great and here i am just testing to make sure the glue is on there correctly because if you don't that glue will it'll it'll play tricks on you and you'll think that is done <laughs> and it's on there and it's not now I'm taking my Maybelline Last Sensation Mascara. As you can tell, I love Maybelline. They make really good products and it's very affordable. And I just put this under my eyelashes so that way they blend a little bit better. And then I take an eyelash curler and I just blend them together. I didn't show that because it's a little chaotic, but you can't do that. You don't have to, it's not necessary, but just know it can't make the application better. All right, after letting everything marinate on my face, I'm now taking it all off and blending it. I'm taking the Maybelline Set Me, Set Me? The Maybelline Fit Me. <laughs> powder pressed powder in the shade like 362 so this is around the same shade as the laura mercier powder this is the one i use to pretty much blot my face and i'm just taking a kabuki brush from elf and blending it out this is really important as you do because this is going to get rid of those lines make sure that your contour is nice and blended everything just looks really blended this is going to help just mesh everything together i sped this clip up but do take your time you might have to do a couple rounds of it just make sure that it's blended because this is very important and now i'm moving on to the blush i use the juvia's place one and it is like the volume five it's a duo set it looks more pink but it's like a pink red orange color and i'm using the, one of those brushes from the kits that i got from someone that was given to me and i just layer this on here i used to be a girly that hated blush and then as I have grown with my makeup, I just have fallen in love with it. And I pack this heffa on there because blush is the first thing that will go away when you're like wearing your makeup all day. So this will make it just last. And you can see me looking at the monitor to see if like the makeup, like if it's sitting there like I want it to. Because it is so hard to tell if it's on there and it's not. I had to take a breath because I was, I was patting it on there. We was making sure everything was good. And so you could tell I was like looking and it wasn't enough. So I had to go back in and just keep adding it on there. But once you get it, it's cute. And I put it everywhere. I don't just put it on the side of my face. I put it in the front of my nose and all that. And then I just take my Kabuki brush and I blend it all back. So it still looks nice and blended, but the blush is still like present and not taking off. All right. So our next step is taking the same mascara that I used for from the last sensation. And I'm just kind of like putting it on my lower lashes. I don't do it too much because they it aggravates me because then my lashes will get stuck together because they are pretty long so they will get stuck so I try to like do it pretty sparsely I don't do this every single time I wear makeup it just depends on what mood I'm in and what effect I'm going for it can be cute especially if you've done like eyeshadow and you put it under lower lash and then you take your mascara and like put that on top it kind of just adds more attention to it but I don't do it all the time this is an optional step because I know there's some people who can't do this. It really just depends on how thick your lower lashes are and how good the mascara is that you are using. And now I'm moving using the same palette from Black Radiance and I'm taking the like highlighter that's in there. I love highlighter. It adds dimension and just a little oomph to my face. And I put it on my nose and on the bridge of my nose and then I put it on the side where my contour kind of sits where my cheekbone is just so that when I turn my face and like sunlight or any type of light hits it, it will make it stand out and then i take this little like eyeliner pencil from wet and wild it's like a dollar it's a really good lip liner you do have to reapply it throughout the day or whenever you're wearing it but i mean that's what any lip liner really for being honest here and it's like a really deep color it is dark enough to where i can line my lips the way i want them to and i just line them i didn't want to go into much of a detail because my lips are a little crooked so the way I line my lips is going to be different than everybody else. I kind of overline them a little bit just by the way that my lip slants it down. So that way it looks, it almost looks like a Kim Possible lip if you know what I'm talking about. 
that's what I'll end up doing. And I put this on first so it can kind of sit on my face before I take my lipstick and lip gloss and put on there because I want this to sit a little bit longer. But that's what it looks like. And it is a normal pencil, so you will have to take a pencil sharpener and sharpen it. And then I'll take my Morphe Finishing Setting Spray. I got this on sale because we love a good sale. You want to shake it really good and then take the cap off and you're going to miss the hell out of your face. I do, I think, two or three times. And you just either fan it out with your hands or you can use a fan and make sure it's good. It might get everywhere, but it's fine. I was out of breath, as you could tell. Then you're going to do it again and do the same thing. It's not as overpowering as the one from one size, but it's like the same thing. But it, it does what it needs to do. If you're looking for something, this is really good. And then I'm also going to take the one from Milani again, and I'm going to spray it again. I think I do it at least one or two times and do the same thing. You want to layer your setting sprays and your finishing sprays because this is going to help it stay intact and stay there. And it works good. And it just makes your face look more refreshing and not so mad after spending hours and hours on doing your makeup. Okay, so we have finished my makeup. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed that portion of the video where I kind of just show you what I'm doing. Next part is doing my hair. Since I am good on time right now for the event, it is 2.30, 2.33 to be exact, but it's 2.30. Try to relax a little bit because this is still dry under here. Not dry, wet under there. It's not like soaking wet, but it's damp. So we're going to let it get a little bit more dry and then if I need to, if I need to, we will do blow dry. But I am gonna show you how I blow dry this hair right here. I'll make it a little bit brighter, not warmer, brighter. So you can actually see my hair because my hair is black now. So hopefully you guys will be able to see a little bit better. Show you how I pick it, all that stuff and how I get it the way it is. If you wanna know what products I use, you don't get to know because you can go watch my two last videos where I tell you what products are in them but I'm not gonna tell you which video the products are being listed in you have to watch both of them and you'll figure out which one has it and you'll know what products I use because I use it, those three products for this everything I do everything I'm not even gonna list them down below okay you're gonna have to figure out what it is not going to tell you what it is okay I take a little break as you can see this is the full face she's giving this is pretty much what I do for all of my makeup the thing it really changes unless I don't feel like wearing like a full face I'll do like a mini face and if you want to see that like a light foundation kind of thing I can give you that because especially with summertime coming up, not everybody wants to wear a full face of makeup like this. But I can give you alternatives to where it won't feel that way. But this actually feels pretty lightweight. I am going to do a wear test of this. So you guys can see how well this works, especially with using these two. Since I sprayed this twice and I technically spray sprayed this twice. Like a, a wear test. And I might even do a check-in while I'm at the event that I'm at on my phone. And be like, this is what my makeup looks like. Because I will be taking this with me so that I can like you know blot my face so I will do that so that way you know like what the makeup looks like and then at the end I'll come back and talk to you guys about things that we can do differently things like that so I'll be back in a little bit and I'll show you how I do my hair so voiceover Nira is taking over yet again but I'm gonna keep this voiceover real short and simple making sure that my hair is all the way blowed out and then once it's fully dry, I'm going to go in and start doing my hair section by section and pulling the piece of hair by itself. Cause this is the only way you're gonna get the definition to look nice without having all this frizz. Cause you're still gonna have a little bit of frizz. If you think you're gonna get out of this with not having that, you are lying to yourself and you're living in a world of lies because you're, it's, it's gonna happen because you're, you're touching the hair. You're creating friction by touching it. But you see here, I'm doing little small sections and I'm gonna take that little blow dryer, you're gonna stretch it out and you can take the blow dryer on the lowest setting of heat. And then you're just gonna like stretch it out using that. And you're gonna do kind of like a couple pass throughs, it's nothing crazy. And you'll see that the hair will lay and it'll stay in that position. Now, as time goes on, the hair will kind of shrink back up. That just means that your hair is healthy and you're not receiving so much heat damage from doing this. But that's the only way you're gonna get this look unless your hair is just already long i have long hair i just have really really bad shrinkage 
but I'm gonna cut this short from voiceover near it keep it cute and simple because after I do this I'm just gonna pick it and you don't want to pick it from just like raking it through there you want to pick from the top lift up pick from the top and lift up and then you're just gonna pick on the inside and just kind of add that volume however you want it to lay will depend on you I like mine to look like a palm tree so it's gonna look flat on the top and the size of it's gonna be real nice and thick and volumized that is all depending on what you want it to look like and if you want it to be parted the best way to do that is parted when you're the hair is wet because it's really hard to do it when the hair is fully dry um also i want you guys to count how many times i say all right so and now because finding transition words when you're doing a voiceover is so funny and it's really hard to do also my boyfriend's here so say hey say hey pookie um but yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed listening to my voice have it's been fun hear me in voiceover form and not just talking directly to the camera but just voiceover generic is signing out so i'll see you guys in another video but it's gonna just enjoy the cute music i have behind with me doing my hair and eventually video nira will be back she'll be back and she'll be gone
Okay, so I finished my makeup. Now we're done. I put the lip gloss on and everything. I do have my dress on. I just haven't put my shoes on. I don't know if I'm going to record again showing y'all the full outfit. If not, I'll just upload a picture on top of this one showing you what I'm wearing. And then, like I said, I will do a wear test for the rest of the night showing you guys how long this makeup lasts. Because it is now 3.45. So, we're going to see how long this makeup looks good for. And if I start dancing or anything tonight. So, yeah. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Maybe five hours from now. Who knows? Don't know. But I'll see you in a little bit. Hi guys, I did not do a wear test while I was there because one, I got a little bit overstimulated and two, I just didn't think about it until it was, I left. I ended up leaving early. It is 9.15 because I'm ready, I'm ready to go. I don't go out like I used to. Place is 6 o'clock hits and I'm yawning. So, I don't know what what's that about, but it's fine. But as you can see, my makeup still looks pretty decent. It's not horrible most of the oiliness is in my t-zone and like this part of my forehead but the side of my face the side of my face is fine if I was to blot this with makeup it'll be okay but I would have to go back and blot it again just so it would stay fresh but I've had this makeup on like this full face I think since 2 30 and it is nine o'clock so damn near seven hours so if you did do this makeup routine and you wanted to wear it for work you could do it you just have to prep your skin enough and then also use the products based off your skin texture because i do have oily skin so um i hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed voiceover near talking to you for most of it um if you guys want to see more videos like this let me know and i can do more of a detailed one maybe even one with the eyeshadow look and have me actually talking to you guys instead of doing a voiceover. I'll just have to get a better mic for that. But that's not something we can't do. It's definitely possible. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Choose happy, be happy. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.